You're not going to have the, the headphones on. You're, you're good. You, you no, you know there. why? Because even the adapter I have is a one ring and I only get audio on okay. one. Okay. I just want to make sure like I'm not like, you know, you want to keep it around there? Yeah, somewhere around here. And okay. I, I'm going to, like, if I'm glancing as you're talking, it's, it's yeah. just because I'm monitoring levels. If it blows up and it's uh, yeah. lower. All right, so Lewis. All right, man. We're ready to roll here. Yeah, absolutely. Lewis is a uh, incredible photographer. And I, dude, <laughs> I've told you this. I know he tells you this every time I look at your pictures, but seriously, your stuff should be in magazine covers. Uh, you're tra- like, because <laughs> Lewis, you do uh, a lot of, your passion is uh, photojournalism, right? Photojournalism, a lot of um, basically, I mean, travel stuff. I, I, I mean, combining both passions between traveling and photographing, it's, I mean, that's the best thing, you know, you can do, basically. I mean, when you're in this field, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's huge. So it's a big passion. So, you know, traveling and getting to see different types of places is an amazing thing, but being able to document documented it in your with your own eye and photographing it is is I mean that's what I live for so um, you know photographing um, real people basically you know it's not you know I mean the poses are set up but we're talking about people who are you know in their natural environment um, you know nothing nothing is fixed I mean they're wearing their own clothes there is just you know it's just that that um, that organic type of feel that it's that that's amazing and and you know when I ever you know anytime I shoot I I just look for interesting people and 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 that's the you know I, I want to get it as natural as possible and you know that's that's what I go for so yeah and you're what you go like far out there dude you end up in places that like you're <laughs> the only uh uh, a person with shoes on in some of these places right like like you went w- yeah w- l- i mean l- l- list the countries you've been to that, you've, that you go to shoot oh my god and, i mean in your upcoming one just like hit a quick recap so in in the past um i would say in the past and we were in 2019 since 2013 i've been to about 20 different countries you have in 20 countries yeah in about <laughs> what are you sneaking off to i, I, I thought you were in dummy like like with three to six no so i mean Damn. i usually do about about three trips uh, two or th- uh, two three trips a, uh, a year um but i'm the type of person that whenever i travel i try to see as much as i can so literally sometimes i you know as soon as i land there's like there's no there's no uh downtime it's literally from from you know 4 a.m 5 a.m i'm out looking for people um um, let's just say i mean one of the places that i that i've been to is india and india is just a massive country it's 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 basically you know almost a continent it's just so so big and large Mm. the first time i went i did a i did a a nine-day trip and f- from that, f- basically, in, no- in those nine days, I went from, um, from, I started in Varanasi, which is just an incredible place that is just, I mean, if you've never been to India, and the first time you visit this place is like the biggest culture shock you'll ever have in your life. It's I've just heard that the, about India. It's just, uh, India in, in general is a culture shock, but you, when you get to Varanasi, which is just a, the, one of the holiest cities in the world, and it's one of the oldest at two to 4,000 years old, it's just incredibly, uh, incredibly old. You get there and it's just, I mean, it's completely, I mean, whether you've been to South America or you've been to other countries where it's like, you know, third world countries, this place just literally just, I mean, it's in your face type of, um, um, what would you call it? Um, it's just mayhem. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's just, it's just crazy. But you'll see, I mean, you know, talking about people barefooted, uh, you'll see kids, I mean, two, three year old kids and they're just walking in the street with their mom and is just barefooted and that's the poverty that you'll see in india and that's one of the biggest culture shocks you'll see but it's um you know it's as a photographer it's 
it, you know it really lends itself to to you know to to the content and to the the, the image um, that, that you're taking I mean because you know you look at it in the Western world you'll see it and it's like you'll never see a, a two-year-old kid barefooted outside on the street yeah, yeah, yeah so as soon as you shoot it whether you know whether it's a, a good shot or not you your eye is set on that it's like why is this kid walking around you know barefooted or or doesn't even have a shirt on uh. and it's two years old or sometimes you'll see it and it's like uh, you know maybe it's, maybe it's a one-year-old who's just starting to walk and it's like the poverty level is so insane that it's um, you know you it's it's just constant and you'll see it all over the place but India is just incredible for, I mean, photography wise, it's just one of those places that you just, you can't take a bad shot. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's just so out there and um, so different from what you're used to here in the States that it's just, anytime you pull up your, your the camera to your, to your head, it's, I mean, you're seeing a shot, you're seeing it and it, you're, it's, it's hard not to take a shot so you know it's it's insane it's it's an it's, it's an amazing place and then you've done what other countries you've done africa you did south south america so i did uh in africa i did ethiopia which was an amazing experience shooting uh in the omo valley which I'm, is i'm gonna pull your put your stuff up to um i'm gonna lay it over this because i'm, I'm people need to see your stuff it's <laughs> if you're in you don't even need to be into photography to appreciate how uh compa- like striking your shots are and then from a photographer standpoint, anyone that sh- listens that's a photographer that shoots definitely has to check out your stuff because your use of light the composition is and i'm not a super artsy person uh but like the use of light right down to the finish too because I'm curious too on how you I don't know how much you do in the post processing of your work yeah. I th- some people like- have asked me that and it's like you know, actually one of my colleagues asked me about uh, doing a, a, a YouTube video on how I do a little bit do of, do- uh, so it's it's not you know I, I'm, I'm not a big um, a Photoshop guy I I mean I know how to use Photoshop but um, there's some tweakings uh, contrast and you know sometimes I desaturate sometimes I, I add a little bit of saturation are on, you creating on masks and all this too and sometimes sometimes it's just getting um the right color balance sometimes it's just getting um maybe if i take a portrait and a lot of my portraits are with uh with flash um so sometimes if my sky is a little bit overexposed uh, maybe you just bring it down a little bit but that's the kind of photoshop that i'm doing i'm just basically toning down the uh the exposures sometimes it's the color sometimes it's just i'm really really picky about how i you know how I present myself or present my photos, um, but it's 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 very small tweaking. I'm not like taking stuff out of the shot. I mean, I'm I'm keeping it as as natural and as as I as I shoot it. Um, so I'm not really you you're know, not sensation. You don't sensationalize yourself. No, I'm not. I'm not based. I'm I'm not messing with what I've you know what's there. It's more of like getting the colors right. Huh. And sometimes, literally, I mean, I work with Photoshop. I'm not a big Lightroom guy. So anytime I photograph with uh, you know if I'm if I'm doing stuff that's uh, let's just say you know the tribes in in, in Ethiopia Um, I'm not really bringing all that stuff into Lightroom and just trying to get everything um, uh, uh, in the the same color temperature I'm just more trying to get everything in the same um, you know every shot is different so I'm trying to tweak everything a little bit differently so it it may not look um, like the same type of style or, or the same look but as I see it, I want to recreate that in the shot if I'm not getting it in the shot. So that's the kind of Photoshop I'm doing. You know, I see a lot of guys, there's a shit ton of uh, YouTube videos too on like retouching your photos in Lightroom. I live in Lightroom, but I, uh, why the hell would you retouch in Lightroom when you can use Photoshop? Yeah, and and, and one of those things is like... Um, it's good for batch editing, right? Like do color correction, editing, light correction, right. when the lighting's consistent for a whole series right. of shots. But for me, like my type of work, every shot is different right. you know i may shoot some, piece. i may shoot some guy like literally with the sun behind them and and try to get um you know a very interesting light so that light may be different from the next shot yeah yeah, yeah. so i like to concentrate uh, literally i i bring it into uh i bring it into photoshop shoot it um basically look at it l- l- just look at a single shot and work on that simple shot yeah so whatever the lighting conditions is on that shot that's that's what i go by yeah 
it's it's crazy because sometimes I spend like 10 or 15 minutes not trying to tweak the shot in, in terms of like editing or, or, or taking stuff out, but just trying to get the colors as I saw it. Dude, so, I yeah. tell so many people, I, by the, yeah, that's the thing with your pictures too. They, I, uh, there's like almost like 3D. <laughs> like the, the skin tones and you get, yeah. I mean, coming from someone that shoots faces well, all the time, I mean, that's what I work with, like skin tones. Yeah. Uh, you dial it in perfectly. I, I, I They look 3D. I don't quite know how you do that. But So, so one of my biggest influences was, uh, I mean, part of the reason why I, I do a lot of the stuff that I do is, is uh, you know, and I have to mention him because I don't think I would be where I am without um, uh, Steve McCurry. So if you're familiar with Steve McCurry, I mean, Steve McCurry has traveled over uh, probably a hundred, a hundred different countries. And, and this guy's images, I mean, they're like, you know, and, and, and most of your audience will probably see him, but, um, or, or know of his work. But this guy is just, I mean, if you, if you follow his stuff on Instagram, this guy has traveled all over the world, um, has been in conflict zones, has, has, has done a lot of the stuff in India. I mean, he's, he's probably done hundreds of trips to, to, to India. Mm. Um, but when you see his work, his work is so colorful, so bright, and so, so, I mean, you look at a photo of him and of his, and you, I mean, you feel like you're in the shot. Yeah. You feel like you're there. Um, I mean, he must have an amazing uh, uh, photo editor. Dude, but, uh, I'm telling you. But it's just bright. It's there. It's 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 um, you're in the moment, and I mean, it's perfection. All his stuff, the way it's composed, the way it's it's edited, is just in, in, insanely uh, uh, perfected. We're talking about your work right no i'm talking about no, I'm, steve I'm, mccurry I'm playing, but playing. but but literally i you know i try to model a little bit i mean a lot of i'm not going to say a lot of saturation but it's it's very bright it's very vibrant. colorful it's very vibrant vibrant and and color i mean I know a lot of people who love shooting in black and white, and and it's funny because black and white, you when you when you shoot, when you when when you see a photo in black and white, you're seeing the shot. You're not seeing. You're not being distracted by anything right. um, other than just the shot itself, the composition. Is that the idea behind black and white? I think so. I mean, uh, that's that's basically. It's a good um, way to I haven't been heard it described, but that's yeah, it makes sense. I mean, it takes everything away. It, it doesn't take uh, you know. There's no color. There's no distractions. It's just composition, lighting, um, a lot of contrast because you know, black and white. I mean, the the the, the shadows and the highlights are very are very prominent. Yeah. So so it's a big thing. But Steve McCurry is this guy who shot film. He, he shot uh, Ektachrome. You know, he's been shooting since the 70s and the 80s and you know a lot of his shots are just insanely um beautiful just in contrast and color and you know i've been shooting a lot of my work with with digital but um i always try to get that type of What's you know i'm not trying to mimic film? steve mccurry but i'm trying to mimic that type of uh that type of color and that type of uh, vibrancy and and in, in the shots that i take Dude, it's exactly what you're describing your work is exactly what you're describing yeah I, i'm not and i'm, I'm not blowing smoke up your ass because you're sitting here i trust i'm pretty honest straightforward person he, and I know this guy's work and I've seen it. He does all amazing stuff. He's been around forever. Right. Like if you put your stuff side by side. No, no, no. I'll never get to that level. I, but I don't I would <laughs> to differentiate the, the, the two, I, it's much a much smaller margin than what you think oh, it man. is. No. Your stuff is really good. Uh, what gear are you bringing with you? So so I've been shooting a lot. Uh, so I actually just switched to Sony about a year ago. And um, I have to say, I, I, I'm not, I'm, 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 I don't regret it. Yeah, there you I go. I don't regret it. You yeah. know, you're a Sony you shooter took, well, you, yourself. You, 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 you sold me on the, uh, yeah. Lewis knows gear. Like he's my go-to guy. If I have a question about anything, lights, camera, like he knows so much. Yeah, I'm big into lighting. Um, but Sony, you're saying. Yeah, yeah so, so. You know, I, I shot with Canon for about for about ten years. I mean, I've been it's yeah, since two thousand and nine when I got into photography. Um, That's I've a big deal, by the way. Anyone that shoots obviously knows that. But when you shoot, if you're a Canon shooter, Nikon shooter, wh whoever, like that's 
that's just your brand like you that camera you could yeah, work it with your eyes closed you know where everything is like to switch brands is a big deal switch brands is a big deal not not just because of just a different camera brand and you have to um, you know flip size switch sides into not just you know basically you're investing in a different system yeah. so you know I know Sony has a lot of different adapters where you can mount different um, you know you can mount Canon lenses you can mount Nikon lenses but being able to you know just switching from one brand to another is a big deal for a photographer um, but at the time I mean this is before Canon came out with the EOS, EOS R and the mirrorless camera um, Sony for the past three or four years has been coming out with uh, incredible mirrorless cameras that are just blowing people out of the no, water no one's touching Canon Nikon um, nope. you know and all, the, all these other major camera brands but Sony literally just tapped into a, a, a market that um, you know they were not only consumer but professionals and you, they were basically making uh, cameras that are much smaller and more compact especially you know when you're traveling I mean one of the biggest things that, that you can do in traveling is just compact your 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 gear where it's 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 more reasonable as far as like weight and yeah. and and portability I mean that's the biggest thing that a photographer wants now I mean um, it's it's portability and yeah. these cameras are, are much smaller um, they're more compact than DSLRs um, you know you're not dealing with uh, with a mirror so you know Sony is they're basically um, they're able to make these these smaller cameras so that was one of the biggest things for me I mean I, I carry a lot of gear when I travel and I mean if you looked at my backpack I mean I, I'm traveling with um, with uh, I actually have a Gregory pack that's uh, about 85 uh, 75 liters uh, is it a cam it's not oh, a cam Gregory doesn't make no, camera so, bags right no so yeah, they make these these travel packs. backpacks and you know if, if you're a big backpack guy I mean you'll you'll know about um, uh, Gregory better, backpacks yeah, it's one and of the best hiking they're packs. just big yeah exactly so 75 liters and you know a lot of people you hold uh, a 75 liter Gregory pack yeah Dude. so it, it, what's crazy is that a lot of that the, the stuff that I fill it with it's all camera gear so I'm taking light stands I'm taking flash I'm a big I mean a lot if, if you see my work a lot of it is mostly um, um, filled with flash so some of it is natural light I do some landscape stuff which I love landscapes um, but a lot of it is portraiture and i always incorporate flash with my stuff so what? you know giving it more of a dramatic look it's it's what i'm looking for um so you know i always pack a flash sometimes i pack two flashes um but i'm having you know you know i need to uh, have brackets for my flashes i need to have stands i carry a tripod you know if i if i if i see a, a certain landscape that i'm that i'm interested in i i want to i want to make sure i have my tripod so i can do a long exposure i'm bringing nd filters for my for my lenses i'm bringing in holders i'm bringing um gels for my flashes really you even it's gel? a lot of gear it's a lot of gear when it when it comes down to it i'm bringing more gear i'm packing <laughs> more gear into my into my pack than than actual clothes oh, i believe it um and basically most of my trips are usually about 10 days i mean that's 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 a, a good balance between you know um being able to 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 go to a country and photograph for for a good amount of time but not make it make it crazy enough where you know i you know sometimes i have to be back here in new york for for whatever reason <laughs> life right for life but um but um it's a very reasonable time where i can i can um you know i can photograph and travel to different places but you'll find that a lot of my you know basically when it comes to my backpack it's just all camera gear and it's like insane it's like a walking studio basically that's awesome i love <laughs> gear can i go into specifics with your gear yeah absolutely man. Uh, all right so camera what camera do you bring so right now I'm working with the a, uh, Sony A7R3. Um, okay, you have this. Okay, you do have the A7R3. Yeah, yeah. that's right. You told me that. Yeah, I was so we're working with the A7R3. Yeah, we're A7 working III. with the same camera. You, yeah. You're working with the A7R3. Then there's the A7R3 and the A7 III, right? The A7 III is an excellent camera. I mean, I mean, there's a big price difference it's between like the two. It's a thousand dollar difference, right? It's a thousand dollar difference. Um, if you're not a big megapixel guy, I mean, if you're not a big, you know, into, I mean, the, the Sony A7R3 is about 42 megapixels. Yeah. The Sony a7 III is about 24 if I'm not mistaken. Still huge. It's like 
yeah but but sony i mean sony's really covered um um the market it's, it's covered the pros who want the high megapixel cameras it's covered the consumer who is just getting into mirrorless and they want high quality um with excellent features but they don't need the the the, the big megapixel uh camera so the sony a7 III is a it's an excellent uh, um uh, starting point if you want a full frame camera from Sony yeah. and and you want something compact, so it's a great system. Um, so you br okay? So you bring the a Sony A7R three. Sony A7R three. What um, lens? So right now I'm shooting with uh, 2470. It's 2470 when you, when it comes to traveling, it's it's a very versatile lens, and I, I think it's versatile for anything. Yeah, Sony lens or what? Sony. So the Sony 2470 uh, 28. I, I don't have so the that, G Master. dude. I don't know how I don't have that. I don't have that. I have a 16 to 30. Four, thirty-two, sixteen or thirty-five, sixteen thirty-five, sixteen or thirty-five, and you have the seven thousand two hundred, which is for portraits. I mean, you can't that's get it. That's my workhorse. You can't get everything. Any, you can't get any better than that, and that's that's an amazing lens. Um, I like it more than the eighty-five prime. I never like. I don't like prime lens. Really. Hmm. Um, eighty-five. The, well, prime lenses in general, they have. Um, Maybe it's because I'm lazy. It's a I gotta move more. It's a niche, but they also they're also um, you for know, what you, I do. I don't you're gonna like be it. able to open up a little bit more. So in low yeah. light capabilities, at a low light qualities, you're gonna have more more uh, versatility. Yeah. So you know, and and maybe you shoot in a night shot, and you want to go, you know, you're working with just maybe a street light, and and you know, and the light looks good on the person. Um, you want to go one eight. You want to go one four. Yeah. And these lenses are gonna be able to do that yeah. uh, so i have an 85 1.8 which is a small lens um you know some people will say you know if you're an, you know if you're a sony guy listening the out there uh what's that is it the sony's ice no it's actually the sony uh it's not a g master it's a sony it, it's it's one of the i mean it, this lens is probably 500 bucks um but it's a 1.8 i mean and you, you compare it to a zoom lens um the g masters are going to go down to 2.8 so right. you, you'll be in a, you, you know huh. getting that that uh, quarter stop um, uh, difference is, is a big difference yeah. when you're shooting you know if you're shooting a night shot or if you're shooting a, a landscape and you want to get a little bit closer um, it gives you that extra flexibility so prime lenses are always going to be as, as far as quality wise they're going to give you I, I think that honestly they're going to give you the best image quality yeah yeah but zoom lenses i mean if you go g master if you if, you know any of the canon shooters uh, any of the sony shooters out there um they know uh, you know shooting with g master lenses you know that even zoom lenses are incredibly sharp and, and you yeah. know this i mean the 7200 is amazing 16 to 35 is is excellent i have the 16 to 35 for, oh, for landscapes yeah so now, now i have the holy you trinity which is snob. the 60 to 35 16 to 35 24 70 and the 7200 the holy Tr trinity it's the you know you you have everything covered um so you know it's flexibility yeah and you know you never know what you're gonna run into out there um whether you're shooting a landscape or you're shooting a portrait shot you're yeah. gonna be covered um but the one lens that that i really focus on when i'm when i'm shooting portraits it's that little 85 one eight uh, is that is that the one that we use in vegas um did we didn't we do some video with that one i think so yeah yeah we yeah, actually that, yeah we shot we shot that that that, that event with uh that's with, a great with, lens it's 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 a and nice it's little small. lens it's small it's compact so you can have uh the the sony 1.8 or you can have the sony g master 1.4 which is amazing yeah. but what for me if for me personally it's a much bigger lens and when i'm traveling i'm trying to pack so many different oh, things into it every ounce counts and uh, literally every ounce counts because you're dragging the stuff yeah. for 10 days and tripod um light stand flash all this all this stuff is just it, it really becomes a i mean it, it, it's a lot of weight you know who makes really good glass of course you do but you know who makes really good glass but it's a, like carrying a freaking Humvee in your pack or on your <laughs> camera. It's, it's Sig, the Sigma Art Series. Sigma is amazing. Dude, Sigma, Sigma is incredibly. Their stuff is so good, but, so you, but it's huge. Yeah. So you tried you tried the 85 1.4. I did the 85 1.4. No, I'm sorry. No, you the tried 105. the 105 1.4. How, how did you like that? It's a great. 
it's a great lens. Yeah. But my workflow is so specific. Right. Which is like, I don't want to say running gun headshots. It's not that. It depends. But there's a lot of moving. And if I go to a prime lens, like I already clock enough miles, um, which is accounted for on my watch. Like I actually see how much I move. If I go to a prime lens, the back and the forth, all that, it's too much. Yeah. And, and the quality difference going from a prime to a Sony zoom like the 7200 i there's not a difference no absolutely, absolutely. I, don't, I don't see the difference so that's why i use that Th yeah. that's why i said i don't like using the um the the, the primes but um that 105 the sigma 105 I, i've never bought a sigma art series lens i didn't like though i heard mixed reviews on the 2470 but at least their prime stuff is the off the charts the prime stuff is um i have this conversation with 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 one of my uh, colleagues a lot and when it comes to Sigma, you want to go prime. You want to go. You yeah. want to go art, but you definitely want to go prime. The twenty-four. Uh, I think they have a twenty. If I'm not mistaken, they have a twenty-four one hundred five, which is like two eight, which is insane. Because um, maybe really? maybe I'm wrong on that. I, I, maybe it's a little bit less than that, but. I mean that's 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 a lot of range. I mean from from focal range and not not having um, to switch your aperture from from eighteen to to one hundred five is is incredible. Yeah, but. Really, I mean, Sigma is really built on, uh, especially their R lenses, is really built on the primes. Yeah. So whether it's the 35 1.4 or the um, uh, the 85 1.4, which is an amazing lens. I know they have a 135, which is incredible too. But it's a 1.4? Uh, one point, the 85 is, if I want to, if I'm not mistaken, is a 1.8. Uh, I well, have to okay. double check that. But, yeah, Canon's a 1.2, I think. But... Right? If, if any if any of you guys out there listening, um, you ever get your hands on a 105 1.4, I mean, that's the glass. I mean, you shot with yeah, it. And it's nice. It's it's amazing. It's a big, heavy lens. Yeah. But, I mean, if, if, you, if, you, if you're if you a bokeh guy or a girl who, who's, I mean, you wants that shallow depth of field, I mean, it, I don't think it, there's it, anything better. It's great. There's and, anything better. It's and, just, you, you really, you're really trading off... Uh, weight because it's a big massive lens but I mean the glass is just sweet and you know I'm a big <laughs> I'm a big uh, optical you know I mean when it comes to glass when you see this massive glass in front of you it's you know quality is just incredible you feel the quality you feel it yeah it's, yeah. it's not a crappy or inferior right. feeling product other than it's just big yeah. uh, and also they play well with the Sony's too like you don't lose any of the features that I was aware right. of like I got still had face detection and all that and I detect yeah. Yeah. which is uh, you know that's another thing I know I'm getting sidetracked because I do want to know what gear you bring but a, a lot of maybe it's more the old schoolers that shit talk the some of these like gimmicky features that Sony has like face detection eye detection right dude I'm not kidding I have shaved off time on shoots with that follow eye detection oh my god do you know how often add up the quarter seconds where you set focus on eye bring it back down I know yeah. it sounds silly it takes a fraction of a second you do that I don't know a thousand times in a day yeah I found myself I had to reduce how many photos I was taking because you could get everywhere the camera's placed is a, sh is a shot it's a shot you don't have to reframe it yeah, it's huge. I love. I I just love. So this I, I I've done some shots with um uh, with some uh, Fuji XC threes, which are, are great for um for video quality uh for video mm. um, recording. Um, Canon five D Mark four, Canon five D Mark three, uh, especially the Mark four, which is the um, you know, it's a, it's it's one of the flagship cameras in Canon. Mm. Um, I done video with with that stuff. Nothing compares to the Sony A seven R three. I mean, we we did that that event in Vegas, and yeah. it was just like I mean, as uh, whether the the person is just moving slightly or just moving fast, it is keeping like track right on the eye. So it's got eye detect and it's got face detect, which is incredible. Yeah. Um, How many points of focus too? Uh, oh my god it's like uh, 600, it? 600 plus and I think the a7 III actually has more points of focus so the a7 III has like 695 if okay. I'm not mistaken the a7 R3 has like 400 but you're talking about 400 megapixels uh, I'm sorry 400 42 42 megapixels which is insane yeah um Either or, it doesn't really matter. The eye detection on Sony is just top notch. It's, it's just absolutely yeah. the 
best um and that's from experience from um shooting with some fuji stuff and shooting with some canon stuff um which is you know fuji is is big in the market right now and the xc3 is is, is a Fuji's big, camera. big in the market yeah fuji is fuji is big and there's a lot of fuji uh uh there's a fuji culture out there that uh that will tell you yes it's it, it's it's huge um I think but orange fuji isn't it uh, yeah I, I believe so um but um there's a lot of fuji shooters and fuji's great um i i'm not knocking fuji at all but sony the eye it. detect on 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 the phony uh this phony on the sony is incredible it's absolutely amazing so i you know you can't you can't you can't right now i i don't think there's anything uh and you know i may i may be biased because i'm shooting with sony but i don't think there's anything better than 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 sony right now i agree and and now the same thing i shot with canon for 10 year or eight years yeah and i mean they're great they're brick shit house cameras yeah you throw the thing down a fjord and, <laughs> and pull it out of the bottom and it like they just work they can they can take a beating they're they're like tanks yeah but in terms of the technology like i was telling we were talking earlier sony is a handheld computer that captures photos right i i mean i live with my camera every day and I probably know about 50% of what that camera can do still. Yeah. And then there's the video side to it. There's a, yeah. And it, which is apparently unparalleled with in the video as far as using DSLRs. Like the video, and I've shot the bit of video we shot. It's, it's insane. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's amazing. It's a hell of a I'm, camera. I'm, I'm absolutely impressed with Sony. Yep, I whether agree. Whether it's video or whether it's stills. The one thing I will say about Sony is that the color, um, when it comes to color accuracy, they're not as great as, as, as Canon. And, you know, a lot of your listeners out there, if they shot with both, um, that's one of the biggest gripes that I hear about Sony. But if you're shooting raw, then you have flexibility just to adjust it to whatever you want. I think anyone that's going to spend 30, over 3000 on a camera they're probably more pro and they're probably right. shooting raw anyways you're gonna be like, shooting raw if you're shooting jpeg you're gonna you're gonna find yourself um having to adjust the colors canon canon has something with uh with their you know you know with their sensors where they're just i mean the colors on canon are just absolutely amazing yeah. um but, but again you could you fix it and that would fix, never be a reason to not it. yeah you fix it in post um i'm a raw shooter so like i said i mean a lot of my work i'm literally working um, a shot um you know one shot at a time yeah. so i'm not i'm not batch processing i'm not doing any of that stuff so i'm really focusing on one shot and as as you know it's it's very important to me how i get the color right the color how i see it when i when i actually shoot an image wow. um so it's it's one of those things where you know you can you, you can adjust it so you know bring it into lightroom bring it into photoshop um you know i'm always going to adjust my colors to whatever i want but canon that's the what the, that's one of the legs up that 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 canon has on on sony when it comes to color out of the camera do you know any professional that shoots jpeg when would you shoot jpegs maybe events like would you ever you would never shoot a job in jpeg um, why would you do that uh, yeah i mean um i i've shot some e-commerce stuff that, okay that kind of that, stuff um that they want jpegs yeah <laughs> um because they don't want to they don't want to edit that, that much stuff and those, those fucking guys huh <laughs> so you know a little bit about that cause you, you shot that stuff too um maybe maybe that kind of stuff but raw is just going to give you more flexibility yeah. raw is going to give you the ability to bring in your shadows bring in your highlights um it's going to be more um forgiving when it comes to to that kind of stuff yeah. so shooting in jpeg and if you're a professional and you're shooting in jpeg you're really you're really you really want to make sure you're getting your exposure correctly because otherwise you're screwed yeah you're going to be screwed it's, it's uh, dumb and and you know what data mm -hmm. It's too cheap to be. Uh, the re uh, yeah, the, I guess the reason to shoot JPEG is either to skip the post processing, right, or to save data space on the memory card. But data is so cheap anyways. Where I'm th I spent, yeah. I just bought a one twenty eight gig for thirty dollars. It's insane. Yeah. So so I mean, most of these SD cards, or even if you're shooting CF, um, 
they're reasonable enough where you know you can have multiple multiple um, cards and 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 you'll be fine but um any other pros out there i i would tell you shoot shoot raw because yes yeah. yeah. you know, it's more flexible and it's more forgiving there's no so. reason not to other than the, those two reasons yeah. but okay got sidetracked sorry i could keep on going down the list with the gear okay you bring so you bring sony a7r3 sony a7r3 you bring um, the 16 to 35 24 70 and 7200 all sony g no so i mean i i just picked up the 7200 but um but literally if my my perfect setup I like shooting a lot of environmental portraits. So if you look at my work, a lot of it is, it's really environmental. And mm. what that means is that you're not sh- just shooting a headshot, you're shooting somebody um, with uh, in their natural environment. Oh, yeah. So so much better than those regular headshot photographers, huh? No, not at all. <laughs> not at all, because I mean, you know, there's a big difference between some, uh, shooting something in studio and shooting something totally. on location where yeah. you're trying, what I'm trying to, to uh, represent is not just the person but with their environment yeah. so so when I travel and one of the biggest things about traveling is you know you're looking at different places that you know if you're from New York City or you're from the from the states here you're you know, you're used to this whole uh, urban uh, landscape type of thing yeah. but um, you know if you're going to Africa you're going to Ethiopia you're going to India I mean you're seeing stuff that you're n- normally not seeing whether you know people are just shoot it, 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 if people are just standing in in their you know n- regular clothes i'm you know i don't you know i don't uh, the only thing i may tell them to do is just pose a certain way or just stand still maybe i see them facing a certain way where i just want them to to uh stand that way that's the only type of thing that i'm actually uh, controlling otherwise it's just their natural environment it's a regular person um uh walking by and then just you know i happen to have some type of interest and, and what they're wearing or how they look mm. um, but I'm trying to capture their environment that type of environment that they're walking on a normal basis um, that type of stuff so I tend to shoot a lot wide so I, I like the 16 to 35 because it just really gives me that um, that field of view where it, you know, yeah. you're not just capturing the person but you're capturing the environment so 16 to 35 is, is just big for me yeah. and, and a lot of if you see a lot of the stuff that I shoot shoot some people will shoot some people will actually tell you um you don't shoot a portrait with a wide angle lens you shoot a portrait with an 85 millimeter you shoot a portrait with a 50 millimeter but um i like i like that that type of uh uh, focal range because it really gives me the flexibility to to capture their their environment too so 16 to 35 i love my little 85 1.8 because it's small it's fast and um it just gives me that sharp quality that i that i that i look for in a a much tighter headshot so so, um, so I like that 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 type of lens, and the twenty four seventy is just basically a lens that's just flexible. You know, if I'm shooting with that lens, is if, if I'm just walking around and I'm I'm shooting a little bit of street stuff, or it's just you know you know whatever it comes, um, you know I have that flexibility just to to zoom in and out. So twenty four seventy is a it's a big plus to have when I'm traveling. And, and then. Okay, so you bring three lenses with you. That that would be the top three lenses. I think. Would you bring? Would you bring that seventy two hundred with you on those? T- it doesn't make. To be honest, uh, unless I'm uh, unless I'm I'm shooting a uh, landscape. If I'm in Iceland, uh, which is if you've never been to Iceland, I would highly recommend it because it's like I mean it's it's a dream. Did you go in there, there in the winter or the spring? I went there in October. Okay, so it was, that in was the like somewhere in between. Uh-huh. I mean, literally, I, I remember going there and landing in, in Iceland, and the first thing I did was uh, go to, um, you know, you know, I, you know, I'm a, I, when I travel, it's like literally I have to get the shot. So nothing to do with um, touristy stuff, but uh-huh. I had to go to Blue Lagoon. So oh, you, you did so the Blue Lagoon. Now. I did, I did Blue Lagoon, and I, I all I can remember is like, oh, holy shit, I'm going to Iceland. And I have to be wearing gloves. I have to be wearing all this stuff. I was literally in a, a regular jacket and a polo shirt. Really? And it was probably like forty-five to fifty degrees when I went in October. Okay, that was not. That's not um, bad. And, and 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 it wasn't terrible, but. 
you know, most people will tell you you shoot wide angle when it, when 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 you're shooting with a uh, um, when you shoot in landscapes, but a 70 to 200 compresses things and um, it it can it can basically give you incredible landscape shots. So you just bring everything um, close, yeah. and it's a really good lens to, to do for for landscape work. But I feel like a lot of my work is more portraiture. Uh, it's more environmental portraits where the 16 to 35 the 24 70 and that little 85 18 just really covers everything where the 7 200 is just you know unless i'm shooting landscapes i'm not really bringing it with me so yeah i yeah, I, I, I think what you make it what you're saying makes total sense with the 16 35 because in your some of your shots yeah just pull maybe that's part of that like three-dimensional effect yeah. it just pulls you in you get yeah, you do you get that get whole wrap uh, environment yeah you feel yeah. like you're in it so okay you bring those lens um, in your light stands, what are you using for light stands? So light stands. Um, so like I said, I mean, everything is just compact. I mean, even though a lot of my stuff is, <laughs> my pack is just nothing but gear. I want to keep it light as possible. So if, if you, you know, any of the listeners out there is, uh, really interested in a travel, um, uh, type of light stand, Matthews, yep. Matthews, yep. Matthews gripping. Um, if you're a professional and you're hearing this right now, it's Matthews is the way to go. I mean, Matthews is excellent when it comes to uh, uh, durability. I mean, I have I have a Matthews seven foot reverse stand that is just absolutely incredible. I've had it for about uh, maybe six years. Yeah. And it's, I mean, I love it. I mean, this thing has been banged up. I've taken it to, I mean, literally, I've, all these countries that I've traveled uh, to, it's, I've, I've always taken that stand, and that stand has taken hits. Whether it's taken hits from me just, you know, tossing it and just using it in the field to checking it in and just being banged in the, in the airports, um, it's a very durable stand that if, if you ever want to, if you want something that's solid and that, that's going to work for you, Matthews is, is really the way to No be. question. Yeah. Dude, and Lewis told me this. So I was, by the way, light stands, you don't many times, unless you do this a lot or you travel a lot, you appreciate that kind of stuff because you really, you, your big investment, your lighting, your lens and your camera. Yeah. It's like, ah, you can get by with kind of whatever with a light stand. Man, I went with those um, Infrodo air cushion, like portable ones. Yeah. And I, you guys, you were like, you gave me a heads up on like some of the issues that they can have. And sure as shit, fast forward a few years, I bought four of them and uh, three out of the four busted up. And I ended up buying the Matthew ones that you mentioned. Right. And like it, it, it just works. It's not, there's, it's, it's a simply made, um, it's actually made in America too, isn't it? Uh, it it's a no. California company. Manfrotto? No, not Manfrotto. Oh, Matthews. Matthews. No, Matthews is in California. Yeah. It's, yeah it's Matthews a, is uh, American made. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's an awesome product. tripod. It's, yeah. It just works really well. It's more versatile than any like the. I don't. I don't. They don't. Do they make an air cushion tripod? Um, they actually don't make a lot of the stuff. Is not air cushion. A lot of the stuff is geared towards um, um, production companies. Uh, so it's made to get the shit kicked out of it. Yeah. So production companies are not worried about air cushion, or they're yeah. not worried about. They're working about. They're worried about durability and shit that works look so. if anyone that doesn't have a matthew tripod if you're in the market for uh for a light stand look them up because it's a awesome awesome amazing i mean it's yep. american made so you're you're contributing to america <laughs> <laughs> you know what though you know it's, uh, it's another reason to buy it yeah um but it really is a great quality product i just bought two more today yeah so your try the light stands what lights are you bringing with you so um I um, I'm a little biased. I, I, I can't say I'm a little biased. I'm not. I'm not gear. I, I guess when it comes to gear, I'm not. I'm not a. I would have to say I'm a fanboy of, of Sony, and and I you know I, I I don't knock Canon because I shot with Canon for so long, but when it comes to a flash system, I'm not married to anything. I think I think whatever works for me is is ideal, mm. and um, there's a lot of lighting companies out there. Pro Photo is amazing. Mm. Um, Pro Photo is literally 
you know the shit you know if when it comes to um, high quality stuff i mean i i I compare it a lot to apple their branding Mm. their marketing is is like apple it's high end it's great quality stuff it's nice looking it's nice looking i mean you cannot go wrong with Profoto. uh it's incredibly reliable um, um color temperature um it's just an amazing product but for me when it comes to when it comes to my stuff it, it really comes down to what's flexible what what what's um what's gonna work for me um and godox is a product that that you know if if a lot of people that are, you know if you're listening out there or, um and your shooters you maybe you know about godox or you don't know about godox it's an excellent product and it's a chinese company um you know a lot of people get scared when it comes to you know chinese manufacturing stuff Mm. because you know some stuff is good but you know i I tell it like this i mean you know apple a lot of stuff is made in china it's really it it really comes down to um um um, uh, what's it called uh um overview i mean you know apple oversees their stuff and and you know it's high quality stuff so godox is a it's a company that's out there that's that's not, maybe it's been around for you know maybe, maybe it's longer than than what i'm, what I'm Was gonna godox say but bolt so bolt, so godox rebrands their stuff in so many different ways godox rebrands their stuff in and um adorama sells it as flashpoint um, oh really yeah so uh, it's all the same company though it's all the same company bolt is r- literally a rebranding of godox so godox is sort of the parent godox company. is the parent company they sell their their uh their licensing to other companies so ah. here in the us they'll rebrand it in the uk it's known as something else huh um so you'll see this flash in so many different um, um that makes sense so so many different brands but so in europe um, no one's heard of godox i'm like really no, no one's ever heard of godox yeah i mean i mean um if if you're really big into lighting uh you know pro photo you know brown color uh-huh. you probably know ellen chrome ellen chrome is a swiss company like like brown color um but godox is the big uh it's it's the new guy on the scene but it's really affordable they make excellent flashes um um, I, to be honest, I mean, the last five years I spent um, shooting with Godox, I shot with uh, 360 uh, watt second flashes, and you have a, you know, I think you have a couple of those. Of what the Godox? Um, the, 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 you know, like the, the bolt, like yeah. the bolt. Okay, yeah, so yeah. The bolt yeah. is the Godox. It's just rebranded. Dude, but, yeah, I. Yeah, you've great. been shooting with that stuff, and it's reliable. I've used it's it. Great. Um, it's powerful. It's also very portable. Um, it's an excellent flash and uh one of the things we were talking about earlier is you know when you're i mean when you're doing these trips you're really worried about your gear you're worried about not only losing it but um maybe dropping it in a rice field or something (laughs) uh but um but yeah you're always worried about keeping your gear um you know safe and making sure that it's that it's um you know that it's in working condition but you know you're traveling you never know what can happen and godox is something that's just really reliable that if something happens you know that you know whether you spend two or three hundred dollars on a on a flash you can replace it yeah. um uh, pro photo is big in the united states it's amazing it's i mean i mean if you have the money for pro photo i highly suggest pro photo because it's just uh, uh, amazing stuff you'll never regret it you won't regret it um it keeps its value if you ever want to resell the stuff um a lot of pros are using it um but you know when you're traveling you're you're really focused on you know like me personally i'm focused on the photo i'm really focusing on my content so to be honest with you i mean other than my camera the uh, uh, a lighting system is is a tool mm. that i use in order to create better better quality images right so whether it's godox or whether it's pro photo um i'm gonna have i'm gonna have um, a, a very similar look um obviously you know there's a lot of different modifiers that you can use but um i know that i'm gonna be covered either either or i mean whether i'm using godox or i'm using pro photo so um one of the main things i'll uh, you know i'll tell anyone out there is um 
is just basically go with whatever you feel comfortable with yeah. um, you can't go wrong with either one um, you know it's like Apple and Microsoft is if you want the shiny sexy high-end laptop or 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 Mac you're gonna go for Apple yeah if you have the money for it you're gonna go for Apple so yeah. you're gonna go with for, uh, for pro photo but if you want something that works for you that's gonna be reliable and um, it's you don't have to spend a lot of money or if you don't have the money for it um, you're gonna go Microsoft you're gonna go Godox and right. that's really it, it, it that's really what it comes down to so it, and as a price comparison too this so like you and I were I was looking at those B10s today yeah which is pro photos new it's the replacement for the B2s, right? And I have the B2s. Yeah, B10s are amazing. So the B10s are mini mono lights. Yeah. 250 watts. 250 watts, 250 watt seconds. Um, and the B10s are what? Two, are they 200 yeah, or 250? 250. It's a pack and a head. Um, they, are, they are basically, um, I mean, it's a pack and a head. So basically, you're going to be working with wires. Right. Um, what's really nice about the B10 is that it's completely. Um, completely wireless yeah. you don't have to deal with cables yeah um, there's a radio system that works. I mean, the uh, the Profoto uh, radio system works excellent with um, whether you're shooting TTL, if you're shooting weddings, and you want to shoot TTL, uh, you want to have TTL capabilities. is amazing. If you want high speed sync um, capabilities, um, it's also great. So the Profoto Aero mode just syncs to it wirelessly. Yeah. They also have an app that you can download from Profoto, and it'll give you all those features. Whether you want to control your your exposure, you want to control your Modeling light, um, Profoto has made it really simple for for everyone. And they have a new um, what you were telling me about. They have a new remote, really simple, yeah. simple. It look. I, I I know. I like the idea of it. Yeah. I like the simplicity of it. Yeah. And it feels good. It's got that sort of that velvet rubber texture on the outside of it. it has like a charge there's no batteries it's about like this big like yeah. i don't know the size of that basically half if you dollar seen it, it looks like a hockey puck it's just like a, a tiny, mini little hockey puck it looks like a tiny little hockey puck it's not that not, not as big as a hockey puck but that's what it looks like there's really no interface like an inch and a half diameter it's an on and off uh on and off button a ttl button and you turn uh, it to turn it on and off there's no yeah. like buttons you just turn it's really slick right so if you're if you're that kind of photographer who doesn't really want to mess with uh, a lot of um, um, exposure or you, you don't really need to control your your power and you just want to go from manual to TTL um, it's going to give you that flexibility where yeah. you're just not worrying about that stuff um, you're just worrying about taking the shot and you know whether you have it on manual or you don't have it on TTL that it's going to work for you so it's a it's, it's a very simple um, it's very simplistic. Is I'm going to buy one. Yeah. So that's, I, I want to buy one because I want to try it and compare it with the other remote that have the, the more, I don't know what the model is with all the uh, options. The Profoto Air remote. Yeah. So. Uh, and I, cause I want to compare the battery life because the, the Air remote eats the shit out of batteries. Yeah. Uh, and I, and I'm not crazy because I just spoke to another photographer then he said the same thing. Yeah, like it runs through batteries. So I'm curious to try it. Plus I don't, I really don't use all the features on that. Uh, on that air remote anyways right. so i'll try it um i know i'm getting super sidetracked with the, like gear talk um all, what i wanted to do was the price comparison between godox and pro photo so the, the like one head huge. one head for the b10 what's the price on like 16 1700 one head for a b10 is about 1700 1700 $1, and then one head for comparable godox Godox, you're looking at. I mean, there's a lot of. Uh, um, you got the AD200, which is an, uh, a super portable. Is that the one I was looking at? The one you mentioned to me. The AD200. I mean, you literally you can put it in your in your backpack, and it's not going to take a lot of space. Um, What's the power? That's 200 watts. 200 watt seconds. Um, you got the Godox AD400, which is an excellent flash, also. Um, well, how much is the 200 watt? 200 is two, I mean, um, a, a couple of companies sell it for 299, um, but it's super reliable, it's flexible, it's portable, it's powerful. I mean, it really does. I mean, it's one of the most popular flags. And the, it's what's interesting about that, too, is it's kind of like an erector set. You can pop the head off, you can 
adapt it. And like there's a million different adapters. The adapters are like 20 bucks. They're really cheap to make it fit all yeah, di- different brands. Godox is just, it's just, it's in a way, it's just giving away all that stuff. It's just incredible. So, yeah. So you're comparing a $300 flash versus a $1,600, $1,700 flash. Yeah, right. And uh, it's hard to justify. Um, it makes you really the think twice. Difference. It makes I you think. really think twice. Yeah. And uh, and I like investing, getting good gear, and I love buying gear. But it do, you really do is like shit. It's a third of the price. Three, yeah. six, nine, twelve. Oh my god, no! It's I a mean, lie. It's, think, a, it's much more than that. I heard much less than that. Yeah, I think that there really is a market for both. Um, you know, you got the Apple culture, which you know will only buy Apple stuff, Apple iPhones. You know, you buy Macs, uh, MacBook, iPads, and there's you know, Profoto has that same type of quality. Uh, uh, it has the same type of culture. Yeah. I mean. Uh, um, you're gonna have a lot of people that are that are that are just gonna be focused on on the best. And right. When it comes to the best, I mean, I, I really think it's about marketing. It's about sexiness. Yep. I mean, Pro sure. Photo, Pro photo. I mean, there. If you look at their lights, it's sexy. It's, this is really. I mean, the design that they put into the stuff is amazing. Yeah. Um, so they are really targeting that high end type of photographer. Yeah. Um, where Godox is just really consumer based but something that's really reliable yeah. um, and there really is a market for both I mean Microsoft is not out of business because Apple is out there right um, if you have if you don't have the the um, the budget for Apple stuff you're you're basically gonna be in that Microsoft um, um, budget but whatever it is that you're doing you're gonna find that w- what's more reasonable for you and what's more reliable for you so there really is a market for both uh, systems out there so it's hard to it's it's hard to say that you can go wrong either way it's just whatever whatever your budget is yeah. and, um but they're excellent tools either way it's easy to get caught up with gear too yeah like to just keep on buying more and more yeah but you like don't forget to number one it's the shooter that makes it de- <laughs> right that determines the outcome of the shot so it's the chef not the uh not the uh the, the knife and um um yeah so yeah. it's um it's Th- they're all good tools in like uh, th- yes there's a difference between an iphone picture and a sony s7r3 picture based on the hardware alone but it's the shooter that makes a difference and also to it any like anything in the arts all that really matters is the end result right so whatever gets you there that really isn't uh doesn't matter as much it really um, doesn't matter i mean it's it really comes down to your um to your photographic eye um if you're a great shooter you're gonna do amazing stuff with either one yeah i i, and, I agree and, and and literally that's what i you know that's what i go by and because i mean i've taken uh Honestly, a lot of my, my work has been done with Godox. Um, I literally um, very recently got into Profoto, so um, I think I'm, I'm, I'm actually doing a trip in the next couple of weeks where I'm going to be taking the Profoto B10. Um, it's very reliable. It's a flexible light. It's got a great modeling light if I want to shoot a little bit of video stuff. Um, but I'm going to be trying that out, and it's going to be something that's... Uh, that's um, I wouldn't say new, but it's going to be different from what I've been shooting uh-huh. with. Um, but the work that I'm doing, it's it's very similar to the work that I've been doing. It's just a different instrument. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Camera, your three different types of lens you bring with you. Yeah. How many lights? One or two? Usually it's just one light. Really? Uh, a lot of my work is just filling in. So I try to... You're not using it as a main light? So I'm using it as a main light, but I'm just filling in the... So whether I'm placing the sun behind the subject, I'm just filling in the shadows created Do you normally the, do that or it just totally depends on the shot? Like, um, do you normally... It, are you, do you have a... Are you consciously like, All right, I always want the sun behind the subject or... You, I wouldn't think you want it lighting the subject. I guess it depends. No, so yeah, so if I if I if I'm shooting midday or if I'm shooting where the sun is coming up, um, obviously I, I try to place the sun behind the subject. So what I'm doing is what, literally what I'm doing with the flash is just filling in the shadows yeah, okay. created by the sunlight. So it's just a one light setup. Um, I, I to be honest with you, if I could take three lights with me and, and literally shoot with three lights, it would be amazing. But I you know I'm a one man show. I'm traveling to all these 
these countries where it's just you know i'm in the middle of nowhere sometimes and yeah. it's just i don't have the flexibility to have th three light stands and uh, or three assistants that will help me out with that stuff um so it's usually just filling in shadows um but even working with a flash and working with natural light it's a big difference there's 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 uh you know when you're working with flash you're working it's a little bit more dramatic it yeah. creates a more dramatic scene and yeah. it looks a little bit more like a magazine style type of work yeah um so it, it, there is a big difference between shooting natural light and and, and with flash oh i'm sorry I didn't, I didn't mean to cut you off it your um modifiers that you add in uh, that you use with or at least that you bring along with you what do you what do you bring for modifiers so um, I love soft boxes uh, I'm a big fan of soft boxes when I'm shooting whether I'm shooting indoors in a studio but I, I find I find that uh, umbrellas are the biggest um, the most reliable thing for me because of easy of uh, ease of use I mean it's, it's super easy just to open up an umbrella throw in on my flash um, usually I'm shooting with reflective umbrellas so I don't shoot through the umbrella I shoot I bounce off the umbrella that that tends to give me a little bit more of a softer light mm. um, but it's um, it's something really really simple I mean it folds down pretty compact throw it on my backpack when it's when it you know when it comes down to using it I just open it up run it through the um through the flash and it's and it's amazing it's just you know a nice quality light sometimes i throw a diffuser on these parabolic umbrellas that i use um, yeah I I really, you show me that i really like that effect yeah it's really nice it's um, a giant soft i mean it's a giant portable softbox yeah this. so w however you angle it i mean it's uh, you know part of lighting lighting a, lo uh, a lot of these portraits is how you angle the shot so whether you're on a 45 degree angle you really have to play with the angles of the of 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 the setup because that's really what's going to give you basically that's, that's going to be the difference from going something uh flat having uh, having a flat shot to having something with a little bit of dimension on it mm. um so that's something that you know lighting wise you really want to keep an eye on because how you angle the light um it's going to be it's going to make a big difference so you know depending on the lighting situation i tend to shoot i honestly i don't you know you know morning light is amazing sunsets is, are amazing and i try to shoot um in that that type of uh, situation when i can but when i'm traveling and you know whether i'm taking us um, whether a motor transportation is taking me to a place and i get to a place and i have this time the the set of time period which is in the mid-afternoon whatever it is i'm just working with the light uh, available so i i tend to i tend to um, um work with whatever wh whatever's out there so yeah. so i try to get my flash in a in a situation where it's it's working with uh, with the natural light, so I you know I'm you know obviously you have to incorporate both of them at the same time because a lot of my stuff is just environmental, so a lot of outdoor stuff. Hey, you know what I want to do? I want to pull up on your sh what's you just sh posted a picture of a guy on a camel. Yeah, so that that shot was done in India back in 2014, and um, um, anybody who's uh, who's been to India India and oh, who the fuck is this guy every time I type your name in this guy comes up yeah that that's some guy in Miami he's a, who's he's a an TV. actor no he's a TV uh, he's like he's like some he's not even a journalist he's like some some uh, keeps on getting guy. in my way every time I go look you up I know man I'm gonna well make know, sure that, that we that guy pisses me off yeah okay you know who he is he stole your name yeah absolutely so um, so it's uh so it's I'm, I'm gonna pull Aguirre. up this photo here and uh, let's see i'll put i'm gonna end up putting it on um uh, uh screenshotting put it on or like as an overlay so people actually could see it yeah but so that shot that shot was done in pushkar india um it's actually the first time i ended up going to india and uh, oh my god and like i said i had literally about, i had about seven or eight days that i was that i was in india and india is a massive country i mean whenever you travel there it's like f to get from one place to another it's just insane so so when when you're taking this did you have any nd filters neutral density filters on this 
Actually, I didn't. Um, that was back in 2014. Because um, it was I, a little overcast. It, yeah, it, so it, it, it was overcast. It was a little bit cloudy. It's it's Rajasthan. So if anyone's familiar with India and Rajasthan, it's the desert. I mean, we're talking about absolutely dry weather, insanely hot. Um, but it was overcast. There was a lot of clouds out there. I mean, it was very cloudy. Um, but... In that shot, in that in that particular shot, I used a Godox 360. Yeah, I used it with a Westcott 26 inch Rapid Box, um, and I had. So one of the one of the biggest perks when I travel is. Um, I don't even have to look for an assistant. People come up to me and it's, it's usually it's like some kid or some 20 year old kid who's just who's just really interested of, of uh, you know, they're, they're really interested in tourists and they, yeah. they come up to me and they're like, oh, where are you from? Um, you know, and, and you spark up a conversation and all of a sudden you have this kid who can hold your light. So and he told me like, that's crazy. And she just like amazing. hire him on the fly. You hire him on, on the fly, and I don't even have to look for them. In India, it's like people will walk up to you, and they're really interested in you. Dude, you don't think they're going to run off with your shit? Not at all. I mean, India. In, so when it comes to India and a lot of these Asian countries, I mean, it's. I don't. I don't feel unsafe at all. I uh -huh. mean, I feel like I can walk around with my camera. I, I feel like I can, I can walk really? around with my gear, and, no, and nobody's really gonna mess with me. And and I don't know. Maybe I'm a little bit overconfident, overconfident. But it's just that feeling that I get. And you know, and this type of situation is like I ended up landing in Pushkar, and I knew what I wanted to shoot. I wanted to shoot these. Uh, so Rajasthan is a part of India that um, that's if you you know just like any country you you travel to different parts of the country there's different cultures in, a, in, a, in one specific uh, country so Rajasthan they have a um, um, a way of dressing and they have the um, they have the turban that they wrap around mm. themselves the the men t uh, tend to wrap around themselves with but they have this this type of um, dress that they wear and it's just all white and it's just I mean it's I mean this gentleman here is like i mean he's like completely dark because of the of the sun i mean it's just literally he's out in the sun all day damn so if you're familiar with pushkar pushkar is they trade they have this event in october or, or i literally when i went there i missed it by two weeks but they have a camel fair yeah so a camel fair is literally you're training you're you're buying and you're selling camels uh or you're trading camels and it's like hundreds and hundreds maybe even thousands of camels in pushkar that are traded and sold um and these camels are big i mean you're talking about the desert that, that are super useful so they have a tr uh, a camel fair in in uh whether it's in late Oct in mid-october or late september something like that but I ended up missing this uh, this event uh, at the time, but for me it was really interesting and um and this gentleman was actually a guide who was who was taking me on a camel tour and i just i took the camel tour just just to take portraits of of uh, of these guys so um it was really interesting uh, i had i had a couple of people there who, who were helping me out i had one guy holding the stand while i was shooting and and i took a lot of you know i took i took a bunch of portraits uh, of this guy and it's it's just incredible i mean it's i mean so in terms of gear this looks like 16 to 35 um so this was shot with with canon and this is 2014 okay, so. so maybe 24 I'll be honest with you i i probably shot this with a 24 i think i shot this with a 24 70 and more in the longer range just to get a little bit more of um you know, I, I like I said, this is a, this is this gentleman here is in his environment. I mean, this yeah. is the desert. There's a mountain behind them. Camel is a big plus. I mean, this is a giant camel. I actually got on this camel, and <laughs> it, I mean, yeah. I look like I, I, you know, I, I'm actually a big guy. I'm almost six feet and like almost 200 pounds. But this camel made me look like a little kid. Really? I mean, it's just massive. Um, and yeah it's just you know i wanted to get the shot with the with the gentleman in the camel i threw my flash as a fill um very colorful so your, your fill was over here my fill on the was, shadow uh, side camera right 
okay. um, with a with a small softbox. Oh, uh, uh, your fill is over here. Yeah, so a camera ride with a with a small softbox huh. and just playing with the ambient light, making sure that I'm getting my my exposure correctly on the ambient light. Um, if you, you look at the shot, it's very cloudy, so I'm not dealing with like hard yeah. sunlight, so I don't have to you know shoot high speed sync with it. And it looks like a high f stop. With the high just clarity, so get it, getting everything in focus. What's considered a high f stop? Like, what do you think that was at? Um, maybe f eleven. Okay. F eleven, maybe F eight. You know, F eight is uh, is is somewhere in between. It's that the, that comfort zone where you know you're not shooting shallow depth of field, but you're still getting everything in focus. Yeah. So it's actually it it it's a pretty good. Um, it, it's somewhere in between. Um, you know, shooting shallow and shooting. You know, F sixteen. You're pushing it a lot uh, with the flash. Um, but yeah, back. you know, a lot of this stuff is just shot. Uh, with a flash, some of it is just natural stuff. Um, oh, that's but it's really, uh, yeah, it's. God damn it. You know, and these are all real people. This is not, the, the, these are people who are just out there. Um, this gentleman here, this is in, in Bali, Indonesia. And, and this guy, he was literally working the fields. This is, he's working the rice fields in this shot. And I, I happened to bump into this kid. I wouldn't say this kid. This, this guy was like 26 years old, but. Who, not him? No, not I'm him. Like, oh my God, hard no, 26 uh, years. So it's funny because this day that I, that I ended up uh, shooting um, this shot um i woke up four o'clock in the morning i'm in bali it's like the second day that i'm there and the first thing i do is i hire i, I rent a scooter so i rent a scooter and this is about a 25 minute ride on a scooter from southern bali to the rice fields in uh this place is called Tag tagalalan if i'm not mistaken um but it's an incredible rice field if you're ever in bali you have to you have to visit this place because it's just absolutely breathtaking um but i get there and i you know w you know one of the things as a photographer is you want to get there early mm -hmm. you, know, you want to get there early you want to get the the sunrise but um interestingly interestingly enough sunrise didn't work for this shot because it's on a hill so when the sun was coming up you i was getting nothing but shadows on the on the on the, on the rice fields itself so what i did was i waited a little bit longer um and um this is probably about 9 a.m but i ended up meeting this 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 kid who was re he, he he it's one of those things where he came up to me and he's like oh where are you from you know where you know what are you doing like um you know they're really interested in and in, in, in getting to know you sometimes they have you know maybe they have a business that they're trying to get you into it you know they're trying to buy something yeah. from uh like you you're tr they're trying to get you to buy something from from them but i met this kid and i literally told him listen i'm a i'm a photographer i do this type of stuff can you get me some interesting people to shoot so this this person here that i photographed didn't speak english but uh, you know i had i had this kid as a translator so i walked around for about three or four hours in the rice fields in 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 bali and uh i photographed a lot of the workers so this gentleman here was a worker who was he was just basically uh working in the rice fields and i i i probably shot with him for about 10 or 15 minutes you know, I looked at the area, try, you know, I always try to find a good angle to shoot him at. And I had the, I had the kid holding my light and it was very interesting. It what was, was your light a, here? I mean, I, so, I assume it's like this. So very simple. I mean, um, the sun was coming up, so I, I managed to uh, to get the background. You did um, an ND filter on this because you have a soft focus in the background in the, in the middle of the day. I did. I see. That's a good point because I, you know, this was actually shot a couple of years ago, and um, I. So what I do is I sh I shoot with an ND. So what what the neutral density filter does is um, it basically sunglasses for your lens. It's sunglasses for your lens. It's going to cut down on your ambient light. Um, but you know when you shoot at full power with your flash, it's going to give you um, it's going to give you a really uh, it's going to bring down your ambient light where you you, you get it in focus. It, not you get it in focus. You get it in ex uh, the right exposure, and you're not getting overexposed um ambient right so that's the idea with a with and a, it allows you to shoot at a lower f-stop because obviously at 2.8 right on the middle of the day even at 50 iso it'd be blown out probably exactly so you drop the shades on the nd filter on your glass exactly and it allows you to do that yeah. and 
And then you you um, compensated for the light on him. So I compensated. I used a Godox uh, 360 flash with a um, with a 28 inch um, softbox, and literally I just you know had it camera right, maybe about four or five feet away from the subject, and basically just filling in. So the light, you know, some of the some of the highlights on the on the side is just sunlight, all uh, so perfectly exposed in. too. Do and you meter a, out in the field? I do. I actually try to because I, I always bring my light meter even in the digital age a light meter is absolutely yeah I've some people some people some people think okay it's digital you know I can look at the shot and you know I can go buy it but having a light meter is just it just it just um, I think it's smart I learned I didn't I, and I normally don't use a light meter just because I normally I know about where things need to be. But I think it's really smart. Actually, you you turned me on to using it. Um, I, I, it seems like a smart idea because you're numerically you've got numerical confirmation right. of what your exposures are and should be, and then you can make your adjustments based off of that. Right. So what I try to do is I try to meter for the background first or my ambient light. And then I, I get my flash to a certain point where, you know, using a light meter is going to help a lot. Um, it's going to give you the ability to just fill in. Yeah. So you just, as soon as I get my light meter and I know my exposure, I know that I'm dialing, I'm, I'm dialing this into my camera and I know I'm going to get the right exposure. And, and so, some light meters are overwhelming. Like if you're not having, if you haven't used a light meter and you're like I can't I don't know how to use that shit it's not right. that you can get a simple light meter there's some that have a gazillion bells and whistles to it Psychonic I think is is that the name Psychonic Psychonic, Psychonic I, I would highly suggest a Psychonic 308 I mean the Psychonic 308 is an excellent light meter simple that's straight cost forward. effective that's cost effective um, but it's also very simple to use you're simplicity right. is, is the biggest thing you don't want to sit there and, and and have to go through a bunch of menus trying to figure out your exposure so um it's a big thing and also it's not good to solely rely on the back of the uh, camera's monitor for exposure because sometimes it's super bright so the highlights look blown out on that monitor and then you should look at it in post I, you know that especially so using the sony actually sony. it's not a good gauge yeah. in terms of what the exact it's exposure not. is it's it not. always looks more overexposed in the viewfinder than it does in the actual shot it so, does so if you're shooting a shot outdoors midday um you you know it's gonna be hard to you for for you to look at your the back of your screen on, on your camera, and 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 know that everything's correctly exposed. So you want to look at your histogram. You want to make sure that your highlights and your shadows are, you know, there's a there's a there's a balance between them. Mm. Um, so you really, I mean, it's it's. Um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I mean, you, you can't just rely on your back on your back screen. I mean, you really have to uh, having a light meter is, is 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 a huge plus in order to um, whenever you're working with artificial light and yeah. you're working with uh, ambient light, it's it's a, it's a big plus, and yeah. it's just gonna it's gonna it's gonna limit the back and forth. You're not gonna be going back and forth saying, okay, I have to bring my light down, I have to bring my light up. Once you know your meter is correctly, you just you're just free to shoot. Yeah, you're free and, to. And and the function of a light meter is you either tell it what shutter speed you want to shoot at or what aperture you want to shoot at or ISO. And then you do a light check. Let's say I'm like, hey, I want to shoot at 2.8 aperture. You hold it subject. And then it tells you the rest of what needs to be done based on right. that or based yeah. on the, the light. Yeah. Right. It's as simple as that. It's very simple. Uh, it's just, you know, giving you a peace of mind that your exposure is going to be yeah. correct. And, and it, again, it, yeah, it's like you said, it's one of those tools that sort of people in digi the digital world feel like they can get it with not using and you can but um, if you're not familiar with it you should try one get familiar with it and it may make your life a lot easier absolutely. and you look like you know a little bit more uh, on what the hell you're doing behind the camera yeah absolutely um, ask me if I own a light meter <laughs> I don't own a light meter but I, you know <laughs> no I have it and I I, I I feel like I have to bring it with me any any time I I travel because I, it's just. Uh, but you know, no, there, I guess there's no excuse because Constance, you could sell meter out yeah. with strobes. I think I definitely would be me because I shoot a lot with Constance. Though I might be switching back over to strobe, especially with these B10s. But then I will definitely be metering. Yeah. Um, because you're managing lightning bolts pretty much with strobes. Mm -hmm. Um. 
I, I get like, I'm really not kissing ass here, but the stuff I really appreciate as a photographer, what's going on in the pictures, especially with light and color. And like I said, I'm not an, one of these artsy farty kind of people, but I can appreciate what goes into a good shot. And probably some of this is just second nature to you because you have such a good eye and know what you're doing. But the framing of this is awesome. The colors, dude, you nail it. And this is, oh, that's what I want to talk about too quickly. Yeah. Retouching. And I just about had a conversation with my retoucher in Lisbon this morning about yeah. retouching. People are squeamish with retouching, especially with portraits nowadays. And a lot of my clients will say, uh, um, I don't want it retouched. I just want it, I want to look my, myself. Now, environmental portraits, Obviously, you're not going in trying to make skin perfect, but that's sort of what people think when they think retouching. I right. want that, uh, it's removing all the lines so you look like a mannequin. That's not retouch. Sure, maybe you remove a blemish, pimple, a flyaway hair, or something. But a lot of retouching is color and light grading. Yeah, like that can be fifty percent or seventy-five percent or maybe all of what retouching is. It's going in there. Maybe you want to select the blues and alter the hue, bring it down, bump it up. The greens, this the subject, maybe you want to reduce the highlights or the mid-tones or bring up the darks a little bit. Right. Maybe the shadow's too dark. Like People forget that that's what a, a lot of what retouching is too. It's not going in there and be like, all right, well, let me start zoom in and start removing the lines. Right. I mean, that's, I that's what to. it can be. And that's... <laughs> yeah. You know, it's it, this particular shot was... Actually, it was very tough was very tough retouching it because like i said i shoot raw so if you're familiar with raw it's raw is a file that is just it's just it doesn't have that those color profiles it's right. just very very it's very broad so your your highlights your shadows it's almost even it's just it looks like a really flat, flat type of look very neutral um so when you bring that shot into photoshop and you and you want to retouch it and you know, obviously you're there, like I, I was there, so I, I remember how it looked. I want to recreate that look. I don't want to make it super vibrant. I don't want to make everything look um, unre unrealistic to what, it, to, what it, to what it looked like. I want to make it as natural as it looked. Um, and that's what I was going for this shot. And it's funny that you pulled this up because I had a really hard time with this shot. Um, and the reason I had a really hard time was because of the sky. I had a really hard time with the leaves. Um, it's very interesting because when I was shooting this, this kid was out of no, uh, I mean. Yeah, and, I didn't you, even notice this. That's actually pretty cool that he's in the shot. Did yeah, you, you actually, you, you know, when you pull this up in, um, um, you know, for your viewers, you'll see this kid on the right and. I thought it was a tree. <laughs> no, this kid literally showed up in my shot and i'm looking at this thing and i'm looking through the viewfinder and all of a sudden i see this kid climbing the tree and it's like holy shit this is just it doesn't get better than this it really does not <laughs> i did not ask this kid to walk up this 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 tree literally he's walking up the tree and it's like it just doesn't get better than that so i mean if you look at the shot you're you're focused on on the subject itself i shot this very wide angle and and you know, as I said earlier, I mean, I like I like these wide angle shots. Most people will tell you, you, know, you got to shoot with an 85. You got to shoot with a 50 to take a portrait. But this right here is just gives you a different perspective that is just very interesting. I, at least for me, it's very interesting. Um, and it gives you a sense of where the subject is placed at. Um, this is in the middle of nowhere. And um, this is actually the uh, Morsi tribe. So Morsi, if... Uh, I mean, if you're familiar with Mercy, which, um, you know, most people won't be, but Mercy is one of those Omo Valley tribes that is, it's, I mean, it's got this very sinister look to them. They're all, they all wear black. Mm. Um, they wear the lip plates. I mean, they literally, the women are trained to, um, to, to put these these plates are around their lips and they just basically it's what you think it's a kind of that stereotype of what you think of like african tribes yeah absolutely like the neck rings and the ear and so the my discs. interpretation of what i what i what i was explained to when i was there was that um there's a lot of tribes in the omo valley in southern ethiopia and what happened was that other tribes would come in to the mercy tribe and they would actually take their women 
So what happened was that the women wanted to make themselves look a lot less attractive by putting these plates really? in front of them. It like literally. Um, so if you look at the shot, they have they have on their ears. They actually they cut their ears and they put plates around their ears. Is this this is a girl? Yeah. So this this girl is I, I, she's probably no no older than sixteen or seventeen years wow. old, and. What was interesting to me was that she she looked like a model. If you actually look at this, Dude, she, go, like, go she was like the 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 bone structure, everything. I mean, her her it, just the quality, uh, everything was just like oh my god, this this she's actually very beautiful, and I mean just a natural beauty. Mm. And for me, it was like oh my god, this this this, this girl is just so photogenic. So I had her posed, and she had, she was wearing a basket. She's wearing her natural clothes clothing that you would wear on a normal day um but this stuff is just very interesting and and you know i shot it wide because i i wanted to get the environment in it but i wanted to get this different type of look i didn't want that 85 i didn't want that 50 mm. flat look i wanted this wide angle look and and this kid who ended up climbing the tree it was just perfect for me it was just like holy smokes i mean you don't get that in every shot no. you can get this you can you can get this um, subject in in a, in, a, in in one shot, but having this kid behind it was like for me it was like perfect. It was perfection. Um, but as far as the color it's itself, it, it really I mean it, it took a lot of tweaking. It took a lot of getting the just from seeing it from seeing it personally and and trying to replicate it in the shot was getting the sky correctly getting the the leaves to be as green as i saw it getting the the color black on her dressing uh, on her dress was you know getting it the right color without making it look so um over over saturated basically um so it's it's very interesting that you chose this shot because it was just it was one of the shots that I had a really hard time trying to process um, in post. So it was harder in post than it was in the actual shot. Absolutely, in, yeah. In the actual shot, you have you have lighting on her as well. In the actual shot, I was shooting with a. Like this is really soft. Soft, but I, there's obviously a hard light here because look at the shadowing. So sunlight. So I was trying to battle sunlight. This is probably around 10 a.m. Oh, did you? Where the sun, where the sun was actually facing her, um, but I was trying to fill in with a with a soft box. Maybe it's not the best technique, but this was the angle that I that I thought of. Is and this face paint or is this a, a shadowing and a highlight? That shadow and the that's actually the, the this right here. That's actually uh, on this here. Is that is that no, that's actually or? face paint okay, on both okay, sides. Okay. Okay. Um, but the 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 crisp the, the crispness of the light is basically a fifty one inch uh, umbrella with a diffuser that I had my guide holding um, just to get the just to get a little bit of that sheen into into the into her skin uh, on uh, her skin tone basically. Were you you using the diffuser also as a shadow um, uh, to like to block direct sunlight and then just use the lighting as that's actually a good point I, I i didn't think about it that way but yes in a way it's it was blocking the sunlight she was still getting the shadow because it was just yeah. she was this tree that was holding uh she was holding on to i see but so it's a very nice. wide it's it's a tricky the, direct light man is especially midday is horrible lighting it's very, yeah. it makes it very difficult yeah it's it, it's very interesting for me I, I think the composition was more important than than any Anything else and and what I I'm telling you, as soon as I saw this kid, I was like, this is a shot. This is a shot I got to go with. I, I managed it's to photograph her with a couple of lenses, but for me, this just, even though it's distorted, I mean, her arm is just way over, you know, it's, it's, more, nat it's more unnatural than what it should be. It worked for me. It just, um, the shot worked for me. So... It's an awesome, awesome shot. And you know, all your stuff too, there's no loss of data from the lights and the darks. Like everything is so well balanced. I think it's a culmination of a lot you have going on that just makes them, like I said, I, I feel like it's almost three dimensional or something. And the colors are such a huge deal in photography. You really nail it with this stuff. It looks true to life. I yeah, just I mean, love the i don't like they're like almost all your shots i see 
in my small opinion, zero room for improvement. Like there's nothing like, oh, I, I would alter this or I'd change that a little bit. I'm like, damn, you nailed it. I couldn't have done that. Like it was better than what I could have seen. You know, I, I, I think I think a part of it is just... You're so fucking good. No Let's go way. ahead and say it. <laughs> I wish. I wish. <laughs> but it, it, the reality is that you're, there's a reason you're traveling to these places. Mm-hmm. And, and the reason is these places are... Not only are you, are you getting... Oh, I love this. Are you getting... Um, uh, what would you say? Are you, you, you're just getting these natural people, but it's just very colorful places. I mean, I wouldn't be shooting this if it was just some... Uh, flat yeah. type of environment or type of scene. I mean, yeah, but this this stuff is bright, it's colorful, and it really attracts. Uh, it, it, you get attracted to it. Yeah. So I mean, this particular shot. I mean, literally, I know I'm not over exaggerating. The green, the so green was this yourself. green. The green was this green. This is in Bali, and this is another. This is a this is a guy who's working the rice fields in Bali, and has. Is, is, speaks absolutely zero english so the gen the the kid that i met was he's literally carrying my light and translating for me so i mean what what's better than that it's yeah. like it's a it, you Horrible know assistant for five bucks a day right yeah so no i i, I actually bought him should breakfast i bought him dinner uh, i bought him lunch dude we should go and get photo assistance over like bring him from and, overseas. and literally ten dollars a day is it's a, it's a month's worth of work for them so ten dollars i swear to god i'm not i'm not i'm not over exaggerating when i say this when i gave this kid i uh, know i gave this kid about 40 or 50 dollars for for his work plus a breakfast and and lunch this kid jumped up uh, for joy he was jumping for joy he was like i can't believe this never seen it in his life probably 50 dollars for for a day's work wow. was insane for him oh, yeah. and you know i'm not you know if i could give more i i probably would i'm i'm definitely Were you I digging mean, through the hundreds when you're trying to look for those 20s <laughs> did you do when you did that did you do it in front of him so well he, number one is like that like you're the number rich, one is like i'm US. working with <laughs> with foreign currency so i'm only working with what i what i exchange but you know i wish i could tell you that i'm i'm filthy rich and i'm you know i can give him whatever i want but you made sure you saw the big bills right no so 50 dollars for him was like jackpot it was jackpot yeah um but this particular shot i mean i saw the green and i i i i I made me i made sure i angled i I angled myself in a way where i was just getting the grass and i literally had the kid holding the light from one side and it just worked and it's 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 incredible and and the colors again i are literally i love love i know you're you're downplaying what you're doing uh it's like oh that's so colorful you see it but uh, to see it and then replicate it are two different things, and you're you have the ability to do that. I, I like. Uh, all right, this I. I mean, there's so much I like about this photo. I normally don't have this response. I typically don't even have a strong interest in photography, to be honest with you. <laughs> I mean, like like going through work, but I do like travel photography. It, 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 good for travel photography st- uh, work interests me and your stuff is just I just like it so yeah this thank is you, another man. one you. man like everything that's going on you've got the layered the, like the, this sort of captures the environment the layered background you've got this gentleman the lighting is spectacular the, the colors the, composition the angle of it uh, this looks like maybe a 2470 you probably shot it with Right. To, be, to be honest with you, I, I don't even Indeed remember it. anymore. Uh, yeah. ND filter. So it's it's very interesting because this is this is my trip to Indonesia about uh, two years ago, and I'm literally first time in Indonesia for me. Like being in Indonesia from New York City, it's like holy shit. This is like the other the opposite side of the world. So you're traveling 20, 20 hours. It was twenty. It was three flights. Um, one flight was like fourteen hours to Japan. And the second flight was seven hours to Jakarta from Japan. And the other flight was like an hour and a half. But so you're traveling to this place, you're in a you're in the opposite side of the world, and you get to this place where it's just a rice field in in, in Bali, and it's like holy smokes, it's just absolutely beautiful. Mm. So when you get there and so I get there. Um, one of my first shots in Indonesia, one of my first shots in Bali, actually one of my first shots in Bali, 
And I get there, I'm excited. I'm there at five o'clock in the morning, knowing that, uh, not even knowing that it's like insanely early for anyone to be actually be, to be actually working there. Mm. Just trying to get there early and ma making sure the lighting is correct and, you know, getting the sunrise. But like I said earlier, I mean, sunrise didn't actually work here because it was just a hill mm. and you really needed the sun to be much further up to actually get some light in on the field itself. So I get there, I meet this kid, he's he's so interested in where I'm from, and I'm so interested in saying, Hey, you know, this, you know, you can be my you can be my assistant and I can you know I can help you and you can help me. So we find this gentleman, it's he's absolutely incredible to shoot. And um I'm sitting there, I have my flash, I'm ready to go, and all of a sudden I'm I'm getting ready to shoot and um I'm shooting with a godox 360 with a battery pack that's connected to the flash on a cord and i have my 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 assistant which is this this kid that i'm that i met holding my flash right on top of our, our rice field which there's a, a, you know if you know a rice field it's basically covered in water and it's just being maintained and you know, it's being the grown. Rice, pa rice paddies. Right, right the yeah. rice paddies. So all of a sudden I'm ready to shoot. I start shooting and I'm like, I'm just impressed. I'm like, the, the subject is incredible. The subject is incredible. The, the, um, the, 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 um, the landscape is just absolutely amazing. I got the right light. I got my assistant and all of a sudden my flat, the battery plaque just literally, I see it in slow motion falling into the, into the the water <laughs> first time in bali first shot first shot in the rice fields and my my battery packs is literally I, I actually see bubbles g coming off coming like off the battery literally my flashes my, my battery pack is there for like 10 seconds i pull it out and i'm like i'm completely screwed i'm screwed like i just i just flew 20 hours to indonesia oh my to God, get that, to that get my flash just completely yeah. screwed up that sucks so I'm sitting there and I'm just like holy smokes this is this is this is not happening to me this is just this is insane so you know we're talking about Godox we're talking about how reliable it is absolutely 30 minutes I, I i leave it out to dry i keep shooting this guy in natural light i'm disappointed because i can't use my flash yeah. but i got to work with what i have right I'm shooting and I'm not I'm not happy with it but I'm like I got to do what I got to do so I leave my fl I leave the battery out I leave it in the in the sunlight it's it's warm it's hot in in um in, in Indonesia at this time and 30 minutes go by and I'm like I got to test out this this battery I literally saw bubbles coming out of the the wires I saw bubbles coming out of the battery and I'm like okay this is it this is done yeah. but you know I'm in Bali I have to test this out I have to make sure that I, you know, it's completely useless. I let, I set it out to dry. I, I literally sh like shook this thing out, and it's like water coming out of it. Thirty minutes later, I set it out to dry. Come back, plug it in. It works. It, I, 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 I just, I couldn't believe it, and. This shot may have. I actually shot this after this happened, ah. and I, I, I swear to God, I just I couldn't believe it. I was just like, Godox, Godox is the way to go. Um, it was just it's just one of those things where it was just it actually worked, and I was just like, I was mind boggled by it. And from then on, it was just like, oh my God! I mean, this is sold, sold, absolutely sold on Godox, and this is two years ago. So, is it still um, do you still have that light? I I still have the light. Um, I still have the battery pack. It still works. Um, I haven't changed the battery on itself. Um, it's actually a pack that you can attach a battery to it, yeah. and both of them still work. Unbelievable. And I, I to this day, I mean, I swear by it. It's like I, I remember, I remember just coming back and just telling everyone, I was like. You know, <laughs> invest in Godox. It's yeah, like, and then they really oh secured my God. a, a yeah, customer. Yeah, it just—it just literally, it was just like insane. But it's very interesting because um, without that flash, I don't get the same dramatic look. I don't get the same type of colors. Yeah, it would have been more of a natural type of look. It would have been backlit. He would have been in—he would have been in shadows. And unless I had a reflector, which I, sometimes I take a reflector with me, and I didn't take it at this time, I wouldn't have the same look in that shot. So it's one of those things where it just worked out it just 
you know the gods were the 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 lighting gods were with me and and it just it just worked out it was just amazing that's crazy dude yeah yeah so thank god that you're actually i mean look at the shot you were able to pull off with the, um with it so good thing it worked yeah man it was it was it was excellent it was just it was one of those things so and, and you know for anyone and i'm gonna wrap this up shortly because we've been rattling on for an hour yeah. over an hour and a half which is awesome too. I, I, i'm gonna have you come back because I, I there's <laughs> scratching the surface with you too on um your work gear all that fun stuff because you're just full of cool shit um if you're new in your shooting most new photographers don't use strobes or studio lights because they're on a budget, right? So everyone uses natural light. So if you're looking up your game and you're using natural light, uh, I would suggest, and tell me if you differ, invest in a strobe. Godox is one option. We've had, both have had good experiences using them. Lots of people have their new up, I don't know if they're new up and coming. They've got good gear. So, and it's very affordable. Right. Get a low cost strobe um, and start playing around with it. Get a modifier of some sort, maybe uh, either an umbrella, would probably be the most simplest start. Umbrella is very simple. It's very easy to use. Uh, it's, it's, it's just. It's, it's just an easy way to if you're traveling if you're packing stuff um, compact it's just super simple to, to set up so and, it's and, an easy setup and I would say get go with if you're going to go on the inexpensive route go with Godox don't go with one of these like Amazon you get an umbrella light stand no. and some off brand light for 40 bucks like Newer. spend a little spend spend a few <laughs> hundred bucks get a get a godox let's say we'll use godox as an example get a good inexpensive strobe yeah and i would keep it a mono light not one like you plug in the wall unless you really want to do studio stuff get a, i would say get a matthews tripod that uh lewis mentioned earlier it's a solid tripod for 70 bucks i think they go for i think it's picked up 70 74 dollars right you'll use you can use it for a million and one things and it'll last a lifetime and if you don't like it sell it and you'll probably make fifty dollars back on it um and then and a modifier of some sort an umbrella is this really easy simple inexpensive modifier yeah you can get into soft boxes and all that and start playing around with that outside you would need a remote too for it to, the light to speak to your camera and start playing with that because it can really change the tone and style of your shot and it adds a different element to it that you you can't always get with natural light alone um and um and and that would be like the next investment if you have your camera invest in lights i would say lights are equally if not more important than your camera um because photography is light photography is light management so or that's a big part of it it's 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 let's say it's so photography it's um um i mean the the word is just a light drawing yeah so without yeah, light you don't have you don't have photography exactly so so it's, it's, it's very important i mean it's it definitely i mean strobes are definitely if you if you're working wor working with natural light and i and i i, I don't um um you know, it's one of those things. I natural light. I, whenever you can use it, is excellent. But there's a lot of situations where you're not going to have that yeah. that that quality of light that you're looking for, and being able to shape your light with a with an artificial light, it's going to be the way to go. And right. that's the flexibility that you're going to get with a strobe or or a, or an artificial light. Yep. Yep. So in in it, um, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Uh, Lewis, like I said, I could go on forever, man, but we'll wrap this up here so we have more to talk about later uh, with photography. I think we should do also do some like reverse break, reverse engineer some other shots too later on and um, with ours and maybe even some other, other people's work and uh, and then we can do some gear talk as well. I love talking gear. I love my gear. Yeah, man. It's a, um, you know, but this it's, was awesome, dude. Thanks for coming in and dude. sharing your time. And um, hopefully you'll do it again. N Lewis was a little nerd, had, had a case of the show nerves before coming <laughs> in here. But um, yeah, man, it was, it, was, it was great chatting with you. I could go on for days with you on this stuff. So thanks again. Well, thank you for inviting me, man. I, I think you're, you're doing an excellent thing here. Uh, thing it's, it's amazing. It's, um, um, you know, 
I'm a fan of your work. I mean, you you do amazing Thanks, stuff, Dave. studio stuff, and you know, um, this is something where you know we can just relax and, and talk about photography and you yeah. know. And, um, and people that have questions to anyone who wants to listen, like certainly any photographers, like post comments in the um, in the comment section, like questions, comments, because we'll go through and actually answer this stuff too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's an open format. So this was awesome, dude. We're going to wrap it up. It's end of the day here. Thank we're, you, man. We're headed into Saturday. Appreciate it, and yeah. The weekend's on, and uh, tomorrow absolutely. I think you have off too, so you get to relax. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, nice. man. Right on, dude. Yeah. Thanks again. Excellent.